How's it going guys? Today we're going to be doing a simple and easy yet awesome upgrade. It is the Pathfinder CHTS uh, kind of intake swap. So basically what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and put a new CHTS sensor in. You can see I've got my new one right there. And it goes into a little plug right on this side. You can't see it's right. Right in there. You can see I've already cut the wire and I'll go and talk about that later. So basically what this does is the standard CHTS is like right under here in the timing and it's hard to get to. You have to take the timing off or you have to dent your timing cover and I didn't want to do that. And you have to replace these every so often or else your car kind of just doesn't work. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm moving up to the top here. So I've got a one ahead and I've got my new, this is from a 95 Pathfinder and I'll link a, uh, just a link to the Rock Auto page. This is TX18 is the part number. And the reason I got this one from Rock Auto is because I couldn't find the original Nissan. I'm sure you can find one, and if you have the part number for that, drop it down below and I'll put it in the description. Otherwise, uh, this one is an intermotor and it's genuine import parts, um, which is one that I think is going to work fine. And then I also got this harness. You can get that harness from NissanPartsDeal.com. Uh, I think it's like $20 plus, I don't know, $7 shipping. So altogether, this is about a $40 to $50 uh, upgrade, depending on where you get your parts from and which ones you want to get. Um, but that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the plug that's right there. So if yours had, and I can see if I can show you a little bit. There's a little fan down here on the side of mine. It's that little kind of duct right there. Uh, it was an injector fan and it came up and it mounted on this bracket right here. And if yours had that, then there's going to be a uh, sensor on that side that you're going to need to unplug and undo. Um, but if you didn't have one of these uh, injector fans, basically all you had on that side was just a plug in that hole. So you're just going to go ahead and undo that. So we're going to go ahead and, because I have the fan, we're going to undo this plug. And I snipped the wire because I didn't have like an oxygen sensor wrench. Um, it is a three quarter inch, so you should be able to find something with a groove in the side if you don't want to cut it. But they're really not that useful um, from what I've heard. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut it because I'm not going to save it anyway. I'm putting this in its place. So let's go ahead and get that out. Alright, so I was able to get the old one out with a little bit of convincing. I had to move the uh, wiring harness off the manifold. But here it is. Let's see if we can focus on it real quick. Alright, so there it is. It's uh, pretty simple. Uh, the other one will just be a plug. But what this does is it goes actually into the coolant. Um, so you can see it's wet on that end. And so that's important because we don't just want a regular CHTS sensor. We want this one from a Pathfinder. Uh, let's see right there. Uh, because this one is sealed. Um, the one for a Z31 uh, will actually kind of like leak. Uh, but this one is sealed all the way around, so we're going to go ahead and take this one and stick it back in its place. Alright guys, the most important thing to remember when we're putting this back in is to do it hand tight until it's most of the way down. Um, just so we don't strip any of the threads, because these are aluminum uh, intake runners. And uh, if we do strip it, it'll have to be bored out and everything. It'll just be a nightmare. So we're going to go ahead and just do it by hand, um, very slowly, until it gets most of the way in. And then we can go ahead and tighten it down. One thing to note, guys, is these new ones do have copper crush wires on them. Um, so, or sorry, cup crush washers. Um, so once it gets tightened down, you're gonna want to just tighten it just a little bit more, just to kind of crush that copper wire or the copper washer. Nice and good. That way, it doesn't leak. Alright guys, so as you can see right there is our new CHTS sensor, um, it's right behind all this stuff right here. Um, and the last thing for us to do is install this new wiring harness. So let me go ahead and show you over here. So on this side of the engine bay, we're going to have this main wiring loom, and out of this big stem right here is going to be kind of this big plug, and it's kind of hard to see because these spark plug wires are in the way. But as you can see down there, it's catch this green wire, um, because I actually already replaced it um, with a new one. And that new one had the uh, green on it as well. Um, but this is going to be our plug right here. Let's see if we can focus on it. All right, so right under here, and I put a little bit of electrical tape on that uh, previously just because uh, it was getting a bit corroded, so I went ahead and stuck it on there. But we're going to go ahead and unplug this old one. If you want, when you're taking off your timing and everything, you can go ahead and just move it over and use the old harness. Um, but I just bought a new one because I didn't want to have to deal with all the timing again. Um, so we're going to go ahead and unplug this, and then we're going to run our new one, and we're going to kind of have to figure out where we want to put it. I'm thinking of running down underneath the fuel pressure regulator and around, um, but it would be pretty easy just to go right on top. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in, and see what it looks like afterwards. 
All right, guys, with a little bit of persuasion, I was able to get this old one off. So here's the old connector, um, and now it connects, and it goes under the fuel pressure regulator over there. And in, let's see, so it's got that injector in front of it, and then right behind it is the uh, new CHTS sensor. And these do have the standard little, like the clips that go around these guys. Uh, so you do have to kind of find a way to snap that on. I found uh, you can kind of just like barely start it and then stick it over and push it on with like a screwdriver. Uh, so that's what I was able to do. Um, but there we go guys, that's how you change where your CHTS sensor is. Um, this is supposed to be supposed to give you better readings, uh, but I'm just doing it for the convenience. Um, so there you go guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down below. If you found the part number for the 95 Pathfinder CHTS, go ahead and drop that down below as well. And I will try to get back to those as soon as I can. Alright, see you guys later.